Another example, this is fabricated on a polyjet system. Here we're importing a screwdriver STL as a mesh and then saying that uh, when X is less than 100, we're with some probability going to be uh, clear uh, versus pink versus yellow. Um, so we've basically made the probability 100% that when it is less than 100, it's going to be all clear. And then when it's greater than 100, with inverse probability, uh, it transitions from yellow to pink in this case. I should have reordered these, but I think you get the idea. So we've got some simple functions here that uh, can be compiled down during the, um, the compilation process to create spatial variations in the material. Um, <clears throat> we... Uh, you know, have uh, worked in lattices. Everybody likes to work in lattices. There's lots of cool applications for them. Um, we can certainly work in lattices as well. This is one way of working in lattices where you import a previously defined lattice and just functionally grade over it. Uh, if you can squeeze these, you would feel them transitioning from incredibly stiff on this side to incredibly soft on this side. Um, we actually are uh, I'll say this a little bit, although it's not the focus of this talk. Um, my lab has um, been one of the early developers of the liquid printing for the polyjet systems. And so it turns out that you can mix in a non-curing liquid, which is the cleaning fluid in the polyjet system. That changes the mechanical properties of the uh, material pretty profoundly. So we can get far softer material than would be possible with the softest uh, base materials in the polyjet system. And so this thing uh, ranges from um, tens of kilopascals all the way up to almost a gigapascal on the other side. And you can really tangibly feel that when you manipulate it.